Okay, it is Thursday. Uh, what do we got here? May 28th, and of course on Thursdays, we like to look ahead into the weekend with our weather briefing. And of course, this briefing is brought to you by Bring Me the News and Novak Weather. I'm Tom Novak. So yeah, let's kind of focus on the weekend, uh, but we're going to set it up at least to show you what's kind of happening today here on Thursday. Um, and then, yeah, we'll get into the weekend. Uh, I know a lot of people probably wanting to get out of the house, maybe get up outdoors, up to your cabin, uh, central and northern Minnesota, northwestern Wisconsin, those areas. Uh, one thing I want you to just keep in mind for this weekend, it's going to be cooler than, than average. So uh, you're going to want to bring a light, light jacket with and make sure that you dress warm, especially at night this weekend, as a beautiful, crisp, cool, and dry air mass moves in. All right, here's the visible satellite loop. And pretty easy to see, uh, again, we have these persistent clouds that are located over southeastern corner of Minnesota, much of Iowa and Wisconsin, same place that has been really inundated with clouds, it seems like for the whole month of May, and it all has to do with a twisting low pressure system right now that's located well south and east of Minnesota, but yeah, this twist, these upper level lows that have been spinning over the central and eastern portion of the United States have been stationary and they have kept clouds entrenched over portions of southern and eastern Minnesota and western Wisconsin for, again, it seems like the whole month, month of March. But look at here, this is fresh Canadian air now moving south and east. So it's inevitable. Much, if not all, of the upper Midwest will clear out tonight and into tomorrow as a fresh dry air mass moves in. In fact, you can see some of these uh, low cumulus clouds now up here in northwestern Minnesota and eastern North Dakota. This is indication of some cold air. So um, no doubt, yeah, it's a beautiful air mass, but it is a cool air mass and we need to keep that in mind. All right, here's the water vapor imagery from the satellite loop from NOAA and uh, take a look at what's going on here. Here's that big massive twisting upper level low that just doesn't seem to want to move. Now it's eventually going to kick out to the east and northeast and get out of, uh, vacate the United States probably in the next couple of days. And, and our weather pattern is going to change. We're going to get much more of a west and northwesterly flow that's going to come into our region and over much of the United States here as we get into this weekend and early next week. And that certainly means uh, this cloudy, gloomy weather that, that many of us have been experiencing over portions of southern and eastern Minnesota and Wisconsin will be history. And I'm sure everybody uh, that, that, have, that has been experiencing this will really appreciate that. But look, you can see the dry air indicated by the orange and the black colors here on this satellite loop, on this moisture channel satellite loop trying to nudge east and south, and eventually it's going to be successful. All right, temperatures across the region right now, 60s and 70s across all of the upper Midwest, but look up here. We've got some 50s. It's 57 uh, up in Roseau, Minnesota, and 56 in Devil's Lake, North Dakota, and they've got some fa fairly stiff west to northwest winds now over much of the northern and western half of Minnesota, ushering in that dry cool Canadian air, refreshing air, uh, and it is pushing south and east, and it's going to take this rain, this rain band that has produced three to four inches of rain across much of Wisconsin and portions of northeastern Iowa. It's going to kick that rain band out of there, which is good news for those people. And uh, yeah, we'll be left with dry air and refreshing air here for the next three to five days, the way it appears. In fact, as we zoom in, and we zoom in basically into the heart of Minnesota here. You can see 70s with dew points in the 30s now over St. Cloud. That's a real dry and refreshing air mass that has moved into much of Minnesota as the high dew points get shoved well southeast into southern Wisconsin. Okay, as we start looking ahead, this is the NAM computer model guidance. And these are the low level temperatures. Temperatures at about three to 5,000 feet in our atmosphere. And what I want you to focus on is what's happening up here in Saskatchewan and Manitoba, okay? And again, here's the Twin Cities Metro here. And of course, we've got Minnesota. But watch what happens as this cool air depicted by the greens and the, and the lighter blue colors 
start to move south and east, steadily south and east throughout the night tonight and into tomorrow morning. This is a fairly cold air mass for this time of the year over Minnesota, uh, the Dakotas and Wisconsin and actually really cold. I would even say really cold air up in Manitoba and portions of southwestern Ontario. But yeah, the trajectory of that cool air mass is right through our region, but it will have modified over the weekend. So yeah, although it will be cool, probably five to 10 degrees below average uh, from a temperature standpoint, our average temperature is in the low to mid 70s now this time of year. So yeah, even though we'll be in the 60s, it'll be a refreshing, nice air mass compared to what we have been experiencing here over the last five days. And it's a dry air mass. Now, as we look at the cloud cover and we look at the clouds or the humidity levels in the mid levels of our atmosphere, watch what happens and how we dry out. The dry air is depicted by this darker areas here on the NAM computer model guidance and these lighter areas and light blue colors are, are clouds in the mid levels of our atmosphere or higher moisture content. But look at how we clear out and a bone dry air mass settles into the upper Midwest, not only tomorrow, but on Saturday and then even into Sunday. So yeah, I'm thinking almost full sunshine for much of this weekend and, and perhaps even tomorrow here over Minnesota. Portions of northern Minnesota may experience some clouds tomorrow, but I think in general, much of the Dakotas, um, certainly much of Minnesota and Wisconsin will have plenty of sunshine over the next three days. Now, when we look way ahead and we pull up the European computer model guidance and we put the jet stream um, in motion here, you can see that this weekend, now this is for Saturday, look how strong our jet winds are. Oh, I apologize for that. Look how strong our jet winds are coming from the Northwest down into Minnesota and North Dakota, right out of Canada. Okay, that is, uh, again, that's quite a p weather pattern change to what we've been experiencing. Hence the cooler, drier air that's gonna be funneling south and east into the upper Midwest. Now, as we get into Sunday and then Monday now, you can see how the jet stream starts to flatten out and a ridge actually begins to build over the upper Midwest. Okay, this is on Monday. That's gonna to start to pull up warm air from the Gulf of Mexico into the upper Midwest. As we get into later in the day, Monday and then Tuesday, and I'm actually a little bit concerned already about Tuesday because we're gonna have a strong jet streak just to the north of Minnesota and along the southern periphery usually of a jet streak, which would be right in this area, over the Dakotas and Minnesota, that's where thunderstorms like to develop. And this is a summer-like type of a weather, of a weather pattern where especially Minnesota and Wisconsin could easily get what we call nocturnal thunderstorms as a low-level jet kicks in late at night and we get these uh, late evening and overnight thunderstorms to move through the upper Midwest. And that could be the case. We may get a couple of bouts of those types of thunderstorms as we go through the week next week. But no doubt our pattern changes this weekend to next week. We go from a northwesterly flow in our atmosphere this weekend to a more westerly and southwesterly flow in our jet stream and weather pattern as we get into much of next week. So that'll mean warmer temperatures next week compared to what we have this weekend. All right, that will take care of your briefing. Uh, for this afternoon, uh, Thursday on May 28th. I appreciate you joining me. And again, bringmethenews.com bring and Novak Weather has brought this to you. Have a great weekend, everybody.